what happens if you um, become part of this trade agreement, this WTO services agreement, which is called the GATS agreement, the General Agreement on Trade and Services, G-A-T-S, is you say that you're going to provide market access for foreign firms on the same terms as U.S. firms, that you're not going to discriminate against um, anyone's products or services that come into the country. The GATS agreement is also very hostile to public government monopolies. The point of the agreement is to have market access for foreign firms. So even if you feel you have, um, even if your market isn't something you think of as a market, like for instance, U.S. municipal water services. We, you know, in the United States, water services are public services. We don't think of it; um, it is a market item that we're going to trade. <laughs> but in Europe, there are a lot of private firms providing water. So the GATS agreement is geared towards opening up a public market to allow foreign businesses in um, to compete in that market. So all sorts of public services, public broadcasting services, <coughs> new monopolies that new public services that um, we might want to set up would be considered GATS illegal monopolies. So a lot of folks are working on broadband and community um, type um, cable access and those kinds of things. If you're setting up a government monopoly in an area, this, this trade agreement does not like that. Okay. And, um, uh, and the most important policy problem with this particular agreement is it's geared towards locking in the regulatory status quo. It's geared towards making sure that you're not going to create new barriers to trade once you've covered your sector. Okay? So what I've been learning at this conference, I'm not a media expert, but what I've been learning at this conference is that soon I'm going to be getting my TV and my radio and my um, internet service and my streaming and all this stuff through my cell phone or, you know, all these interesting technological changes are going to be occurring. And we don't know what new regulations um, to protect the public interest, to protect diversity in media, to protect cultural interests are going to be needed in the future. And this agreement doesn't care because they don't want new regulations. They want a free world, a free trade. And so if audiovisual gets covered into this agreement, we're setting a legal framework that may not kick us in the ass in the first year, but it's going to start kicking us in the ass further down the road. This is, remember, the constitution of the global economy. It's a constitution that's legally binding upon us, and it's setting a legal groundwork um, in the future that seem to be lacking in a Bill of Rights for broadcasts and a Bill of Rights for cultural diversity and those kinds of things. So types of measures that are implicated in these types of agreements. National ownership requirements are discriminatory. Um, local content requirements would be discriminatory. Subsidies for media cultures and the arts, whether it's PBS or National Endowment for the Arts, those kinds of things are discriminatory. Um, all sorts of public interest rules like banning advertising um, of tobacco to minors or um, ownership limitations of different kinds um, are, are sort of, you know, on their face um, um, barriers to trade. So in Europe, there's been a campaign to keep culture out of the WTO GATS agreement. And there has not been so much, there's been a little bit of activity here in the United States, but not a lot. You know, we sit around, we're sort of legalistic policy wonks, and we sit around and we read these global trade agreements, and we go, oh shoot, they're mm -hmm. talking about water. Let's go tell the water people. And oh shoot, the libraries are in here. Do the librarians know it? And oh shoot. So I'm here to say to the broadcast folks that your stuff is now in these trade agreements, and you got to deal with it in some way or form. And it's the same folks. They sit on a trade advisory committee of the U.S. government. Um, it's uh, AOL Time Warner. It's are they still together now? Or are they? Yeah. All right. It's <laughs> um, you know all these different institutions are now at the trade negotiating table, and we're just here to tell you that um, you're not, and you need to be, um, and uh, you need to get working on that. And I just want to mention one other thing: when you're in the when you're in the WTO, when when a nation's laws is challenged in the WTO, only one nation can challenge another nation's laws. Okay, but it, under NAFTA, under the North American Free Trade Agreement, there's something even more insidious, and that is under NAFTA, a corporation can challenge a nation's laws. They can challenge it directly, and they can challenge it for cash damages. It, it, the, they can't make you change your law, but they can get cash damages for a law that damages their profitability. All right, and there has already been filed at least 
one media case under NAFTA that very few folks know about. But once again, when uh, under NAFTA, it's a corporation challenging a nation. And the United States has been challenged many, many, many times. And there's only been a few cases decided, but it's been for millions of dollars. And it's been behind closed doors, in a secret trade tribunal, uh, those kinds of things. And it's taxpayers are footing the bill. However much our rules and regulations can be damaged. Other countries have many more um, um, protections for their um, industries. They have, I was in Brussels recently and they had public broadcasting, I think in five languages. Um, other nations have a lot more at stake than we do. And so it's very incumbent upon us as Americans to try and rein in our government so that cultural diversity is not trampled around the world. And I will end there and we can talk, talk more a little later.